This is your Sci-Fi Now. So we've got a great episode this week. Maybe the best of the whole series or second best compared to the first episode of the second season. It's uh, season two, episode seven, Free Radicals. Now, usually the title of the show means several different things in my experience. Uh, Free Radicals in chemistry means uh, an atom or molecule where the valence electrons are unpaired. Coincidentally, or maybe not, there's a Flaming Lips song with the title Free Radicals. And the basic gist of the song is that you're not a radical, you're actually a fanatical. And it has a line, you're turning into a poor man's Donald Trump. This was written back in 2006. Uh, another possible meaning for free radicals, of course, is the the terrorists and stuff that are running around in the show. Okay, so it's usually pretty important to pay attention to the recaps. And this week we have the bomb in the recaps. And not notice the circuit board and all the neat wiring with little cable ties. There's two flares. Uh, I don't know if that's a valid way to set off a bomb. I, I did like two internet searches on bombs and I couldn't find anything about that. And that's the limit of what I want to do, you know, for searching for bombs, you know, because uh, we're in the, in the uh, total informational awareness age and I'm going to get a knock at my door if I do too much more research on this television <laughs> thing. So uh, uh, anyway, this does not look like a prison job. Uh, that's the main thing to take away here. And we'll be discussing that circuit board again later. Frankie's occupation is to seduce young men and wire them up with explosives and then blow them to bits. Here's a cool detail. The cups that they use to toast, probably with sake, the symbol on there is the Japanese kanji symbol for samurai. Now, samurais, of course, the connotation is, you know, Bushido code, seppuku, which is ritual, suicide, and so it's very fitting. Morgan checks the lead line box holding the gauntlet with what looks like an ancient Geiger counter. You know, it kind of looks like the really old kinds like this. I really don't trust Morgan, and I'll get to a reason, a new reason why I don't trust her later in the video, but uh, I didn't spot anything wrong in this scene, did you? We get a nice overhead view of the loading docks where the prisoners work, and look at that big crater at top right. I wonder what that's from. This action scene was really well done. It feels like a first-person shooter. And then Burke ruthlessly guns down all but one of the prisoners. There's a theory posted on Reddit by Adult Duckling. Interesting theory. And he says that one of these three things must be true. Either he's actually working for the resistance, or he's extremely stupid, or it's just bad writing. And I think I would agree with that. Uh, you know, he has his duty and honor thing. You know, would anybody be like that in reality? And he uh, got Betty transferred, but, you know, he didn't interrogate her as far as we know. And now he killed four out of the five people that he could have tortured to get information. Now, remember, I think that the Red Hands are a government-run operation, possibly a Snyder-run operation, but in any case, not a normal terrorist group. You know, because, like, remember at the recruiting station, they gunned down all those civilians. That uh, would just bring public sentiment against the terrorists and for the government. So if Burke knows that the Red Hands are government, actually, and then he's killing them off as fast as he can, then maybe Burke is actually kind of a good guy. Will lets one guy go. That will probably come back to haunt him. And whoa, we find out from Broussard's contacts that the message from the moon and also from the wall is a countdown. The message from the moon was a countdown to the arrival day. And the countdown in the wall is to a different event in the future. The writers did a really good job of faking us out with uh, Maya doing the same ritual that Frankie did. 
And uh, so it sets us up to think that Bram is going to suicide bomb himself. So Burke basically allows Will to interfere with the integration of Frankie, allowing Frankie to kill herself. But maybe that's actually what Burke wanted. And we're back with the Whiz Kids now, the two remaining Whiz Kids. And the screens they put up just don't make sense. Take a look at the left hand column, location one, pop decrease, population decrease, 12,650,231. Birth rate, 50,542. Total, 12,700,773. And present is the same. Now, you can't take a population decrease and then add the birth rate and then get anything meaningful. At least I can't figure it out. But maybe we weren't supposed to look at that so closely. But on the next screen, this graph does not make sense either. So we've got the block population on the y-axis. Uh, so it starts out at close to 160, well, what, 160,000? That would be pretty darn small, but maybe. Uh, and then you've got all these plot points, and you've got the population trend in red. And along the x-axis, we have the time period, of course. 56 is when it gets to zero. Now, do you see what the problem is here? They are extrapolating into the future, but they are displaying all these data points. Let's take as an example the extinction of the thylacine, or Tasmanian tiger. So this graph looks kind of similar, right? The dots would be the blue dots in the other graph, and the line would be the red line. But the thing is, this is in the past. So it's a, it went extinct in the 1930s, and that's it. So there's no extrapolation here. Let's take a look at a different graph. This graph is for the world population of humans. So the dots are the data points. And the last year they have data for is about 2005. So anything in the future, all the way up to 2050, you know, they don't have data points because that's the future. They don't know exactly where it's going to be. The line that would be the uh, correspond to the red line in the other graph. That's the uh, their model. It's a logistical growth. Uh, so it's a very good fit, but it's it's just a prediction for the future. There's no data points in the future. So let's take a look at the WizKids graph again. They said that they're plotting census data. So those blue dots are the population at a given point in time. The problem is they're going into the future. So, you know, there should just be blue dots up to a certain point, And then they should extrapolate beyond that with just the red line and no blue dots. So for this shipment, there were a lot of theories on the internet. A lot of people thought it would be the VIP from the last episode of the first season or aliens of some sort. I predicted that it would be human bodies, and I was right. Of course, I said they would be dead human bodies and they turned out to be live, but that's a minor point. The reason I think that, that there would be human bodies is that, you know, if you think about the factory, the you know factory has an input and an output. The output of the factory is apparently oil, it may have other outputs as well, but one of the outputs is oil because we see that the tanks of the factory are labeled with BBLS, which is oil barrels. And one of the factory workers appears to be covered in oil. If oil is one of the possible outputs of the factory, what would be the inputs? Well, we know there's lots of people going to the factory and they don't seem to be returning. And you can make oil from people or animal carcasses. You just render the fat and then you can convert it into biodiesel or other oil products. Plus the colony is on the brink of starvation. You know, the Bowmans haven't had anything but oranges to eat for three episodes. And you know, some, Snyder has to have his thick juicy steak somehow. So you can trim off the meat and then use the rest to produce oil. Let's say you want to go to the grocery store to buy fish. Well, you could buy frozen fish, or you could buy fresh fish, 
or you could buy live fish that's flapping around the conveyor belt as you go to check out. Well, this is the live fish that's flopping around on the floor. Rest in peace, Jenkins. We hardly knew you. Well, last week I was speculating about who gave the bomb to the prisoners because it's just too professional for them to have done it themselves. So I thought it was Jenkins, but now I think it was Snyder because he just has so much to gain. You know, Nolan came and visited and inspected the shipment, poked around in it, and then suddenly the prisoners had this bomb, and then it, the bomb blew up the shipment. So now it's going to look like Nolan blew up the shipment, and that's going to probably leave open the office of assistant proxy, and Snyder just might be able to slide right in there. And you know what? Maya just might be alive. So this guy said, you knew where she is, and he explained that they needed someone to detonate the bomb. But the bomb had a sophisticated circuit board, and what was that there for if not for a timer or a vibration detector or something where they could have just put the bomb on board and had it do its job without somebody needing to sacrifice themselves. And that wraps it up for this week. Let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions or comments, and like and subscribe, it'll help out with this new channel a lot.